Hey everybody, welcome back to the seventh continent. Now let's start adventuring. Okay, so the world is set up. Here's Jen, Keila McCluskey, here's me, Ferdinand. I've got my walking pole, Jen's got her splint. I've got all my collected delicious crab meat waiting to be eaten. And here we are over on this peninsula. Now, like I said right up front, Jen and I, in our game, we've already explored this. We already know what's over here at the creepy graveyard. So I'm not gonna do it again. Um, because it's actually interesting. The main thing is, we wanted to get into that sub, but we came across a challenge we would have to, I won't say what the challenge is, but a challenge that was going to be difficult for us to achieve, and if we fail, the game says, well, draw a certain card. And we're worried that if we draw that failure card, the submarine will leave and will be gone forever. And we don't want that to happen. We want to explore the interior of that sub. But this game is full of permanent choices, permanent consequences. I mean, you can get cards banished from the game, so you'll never get to do them. So Jen and I decided discretion was the better part of Valor. We're not going to explore the sub, because if we fail, we don't want to see it disappear. So we've instead decided, well, OK, we'll come back to this later. Let's continue exploring. Now, whenever you um, put a card, a location on the area that has one of these little sunbe sunbursts, that's telling you that there is a randomly generated event in that direction. So to our east is a randomly generated event. I'll just go on ahead and draw one. And so that's here. Now, we're ready to go. We have a choice. We could interact with the sub. And to do so would require that we draw one card from our action deck. And remember, as I was saying in the setup, the action deck, this represents our overall energy. If the action deck ever runs out, uh, you know, and completely empties out into the discard pile, we then shuffle the discard pile and start, whenever we do actions, we draw from the discard pile. In the, if we ever, from the discard pile, draw a curse card, and there already are a few curses in here, we instantly die. We lose. That's it. Like permadeath style death. So it is absolutely crucial, crucial for us not to just blithely do actions and, dis and draw and discard cards from our draw deck because that's us permanently running out of energy. Now that's why we need to eat this crab meat to, uh, to restore, but we're not going to eat this until we can cook it because it'll let us restore a lot more cards. Um, you know, six cards per uh, crab meat instead of three. So anyway, so we decided not to explore any further, and I would have to draw two cards to explore this graveyard. I certainly don't want to do that because we already know what's in there, and again, I don't want to spoil it for you. So we're kind of done with this area, so we're going to head back east. Now, that means if I look at this, we want to head east. Like I said, there's an unknown thing here. But to find out what it is, all we have to do, we, we, we draw zero cards. We don't have to draw any cards, so it doesn't take any time to discover what this is. And now this is a typo in the prototype. It says return this, but it really means flip this. Uh, so Jen or I or both of us together can declare, because we can act independently, we can split up, we can stay together. But um, if we act independently, only that person has to deal with the potential consequences of this. So if this is a bad thing, maybe we'll only Jen or I should do it separately instead of both of us doing it together. Now as it happens, I already know what's here. So we'll just say, be, be, um, yeah, no, actually, no, I don't. I don't know what's here. Um, because, uh, because this is randomly chosen. So is it good or bad? Well, let's see, I think I'll, I'll do it by myself because if it's a bad thing, I don't want Jen to have to suffer the consequences. So that means I, this, this little squ white square on any card means do an action, draw that many cards, and get that many successes. Because when you draw cards, they have stars that count as successes or achievements. So to, to find out what is waiting for us, I have to draw zero cards, and I need zero successes. So that's going to be easy peasy. I, I, so I'm just going to flip it. I draw no cards, I flip it, and I discover cursed. Well, I am very, very glad that I did not do this with Jen because both of us would have to deal with this right now if Jen had decided to help me. So here's the situation. You are overcome by anxiety. In, uh, in spite of the cold temperature, you're sweating and, and start shaking uncontrollably. I now, this little uh, explosion of red stuff means I must do this action. Uh, and which means I, um, I have to draw at least zero cards and I need three successes. If I'm successful, I manage to control my condition and I get another experience point. Hooray! But if I fail, 
um, with an intense effort, I do still manage to calm down, but then I become tired. And becoming tired is a bad thing, particularly because I'm already tired. So the more tired I get, the worse it gets. So anyway, um, although actually that's not too bad because Jen could have helped me, but actually Jen doesn't really have, you know, Jen has an idea of how to build a bow. An idea of how to build a bow is not going to help. And, um, oh shoot, actually Jen could have helped me because this splint that she built can help, uh, because it's an upgraded splint, it can help for medical, but it can also help for morale-based things and even for mental challenges. So if Jen were with me, if Jen were helping, she could use one of the charges of her splint and that would immediately give me one success. But I need three successes. But now, since Jen's not helping me, I did it by myself, I, I have only myself to do it. Now, remember, it said I have to draw zero cards, but I can draw as many cards as I want. I could draw five cards, and if I drew five cards, I'd almost guarantee that I'd get three successes. But here's the thing. Um, if I only draw one card, I, it, there's no way I can do it. If I draw two cards, I might get lucky. If I draw three cards, it's a little bit more likely that I'll succeed and avoid getting tired. But here's the thing. If I get tired, basically, since I'm already suffering two states, paranoia and tired, if I have to take a third state, I will have to, we as a group have to discard two cards for every um, state I already have. So if I try this and fail, the penalty is we'll have to discard two cards. And that's unfortunate. But if I um, try it and succeed, we'll have to discard however many cards I drew. But the interesting thing is if I try, if, if, I, tr if I draw three cards, say one, two, three, and try to succeed at this, two of these cards will get discarded and one of them I will get to keep as a new idea, which maybe will help us out. Who knows? And maybe I'll get the successes so we won't suffer the penalty. But in all honesty, I think, ah, since... If Jen could have helped me, if Jen had helped me and would have been able to use the splint, I'd go for it. I'd actually try to solve it. I'd probably draw two cards. I know I have one success from Jen. Hopefully drawing two cards would give me the other two successes. We'd get to keep one card. But as it is, I don't think I'm even going to try to... Sh I'm not going to try to fight the curse. I'm going to draw zero cards because, as I mentioned in the setup, we are already halfway through our draw pile and half discard pile. I, we can't afford to be taking chances that might make us cost more. So I'm going to draw no cards, which means I instantly fail and I have to take another tired. Now, so this is another tired I have to take. Whenever you take a state, you count the number of states you currently have and discard that many cards. So we just lost thinking, oh, I would, and, oh, actually, now let's just say I had been brave and let's say I was going to draw two cards since I'm going to discard these anyway. If I had said I was going to draw two cards, this has a success. <gasps> two cards would have been a success because it's one, two, three. These two cards together created three stars. I would have been successful. And then I would have been able to keep thinking or forewarned is forearmed. Oh, but how could I have known? This would have been a long shot. I didn't, and so I'm having to discard both of these very valuable cards. And now, since I already have a tired, I don't have to take another one. But if I ever get tired or paranoid or injured again, again, we just burn through cards. But that's it. We have dealt with this uh, with intense. I, you know, I managed to uh, calm down, and that was the little mini adventure. And it was an interesting choice. I wish Jen had come because I would have tried it, and we would have. Then I'd be able to think, and that's a very powerful ability. Oh, but anyway, so I've done it, and either way, my reward is I now get to discover card 15 in this area. All of that was to deal, was to explore and find card 15. All right, the terrain is split in two by an inlet. So here we are. Now, interestingly, this is not a location. This is another event card. But unlike the last event I did, which was mandatory, I had to do it immediately because it had this little like, starburst around the action. This is an optional action. Basically, what does it say? The, the waves rumble and fiercely crash against the rocks. This is certainly going to be one tough voyage. All right. So I have to do this action, which is balance. I have to try and find my balance and go across these razor sharp rocks to get from where I am to the other side. And if I succeed, and this means I have to draw three cards and I need one success. Now I can draw more cards. I can draw five cards. I can draw six cards. It's interesting. It's a balanced task. And my, my walking pole 
helps me with balance. It automatically gives me one success. We only need one success, so we're pretty much guaranteed. Although, again, we'll have to burn through at least three cards to do this. But the success is this, the failure is this. Failure is, I, we don't move and I get tired. Success is, we get to put down uh, card 17 or card 13. I'm already on 17, so I'm sorry, we, get to put, we put card 3 over here. And so we'd finally get off this little thing after we cross this rocky step. So it's a balance test. Oh dear. Wow, it's going to be tough to get off this little island. Okay, now, I don't have to do it immediately. So, all of that happened based off one action, which was me wanting to check out, hey, what was the adventure? And then the adventure turned out to be a curse, and after that was over, we discovered what was actually here, and we have to cross these razor-sharp rocks to get back to the main island. I'm not going to tell you how we got out here. It's a whole other story. Okay. So, now this is something I think Jen and I will do together. Because if I do it by myself, well, no, actually, it doesn't matter. We can do it together or we can do it separately. Either way, once it's done, um, it, as it says, put card, um, you know, card three, which is where we're trying to get to, in place of this. So, once one of us do, does it, the other person, basically, we will have found a way across, and then the other person can just get across easily. But Jen and I can do it together. We can do objects separately or we can do them together. And, um, now interestingly, Jen's items and her ideas don't really help me with this, but if we do this together, and try to do the balancing together, there's one more benefit for working together. Remember, I have to draw at least three cards. That's very painful to burn through three more cards. We don't want to burn through cards, and I need one success. But if, we're, if I'm working with another player, I can reduce the number of cards I draw, but increase the number of successes I need. So if Jen and I do this together, we could say, we're only going to draw two cards, but we need two successes. And the nice thing is, I can already get one success guaranteed because of my poll. I can only use it once per action. So, right now, if I do this, I'm going to have to draw three cards, and I'm pretty much guaranteed to get a success. And I, I have this fallback if I need it. But that's three cards wasted. That's if I do it by myself, or if Jen does it by herself. But if we do it together, we could say, hey, let's only draw two cards and try to get two successes. Because um, Which means, net, we will have saved more of this. I think we're going to do it together. We are going to brave the Razor Rocks. So here we are. We're going to do this event that is connected to where we are. It, and we say, Now, we could draw one card and get three successes, but that's way too dangerous. So this is scary. I'm going to, I mean, but, but we're doing this. We're taking a risk to, to not have to burn through our draw deck as fast as possible. So we're going to do it. We're going to, now, we declare how many cards we're going to draw. We draw them. We don't get to look as we're drawing. We, if, if, we're, if we're chicken, we could draw one more, but I'm, I'm very, very confident that we'll get at least one success here. One of those little stars. If we get two successes, great. Then I don't have to use my pole. If we only get one success, I'll use my pole, and that will be the second success we need to do it. Let's see what we found. We found there's a success, and two successes were built in. All right. So that means two successes, I don't have to use my poll, so I can save it for future challenges. I All right, so great. We have succeeded at the Razor Rocks. Now that means uh, that we didn't do the failure, which is getting more tired. Instead, we get to put space number three on the board. So one, two, three. There we go. Space number three. Now I've already been here before. I'm not going to read the storyline, but here we are. We have found a way across the rocks. And so now we can travel back and forth between these two tiles quickly and easily without having to burn through a lot of cards anymore because we braved the challenge and because we were working together, we overcame. Hooray! Teamwork! Okay, so that's that. Now, remember, I drew two cards to attempt it. Whenever you draw cards to do an action, you get to keep one of them. So we can keep these we can keep this idea of how to build um, bolas, so which are a great weapon. They can help us hunting or fighting. Or we can keep this idea of how to make weaved cord, which can help us uh, put, put the fire mancher in play on the same terrain card, and then just, ooh, so we can use weaved cord to make fire. And now to make, to, to use our idea of weaved cord, we need to draw two cards. But if we do it in an area where we have access to rock, which there is rock in this area, you can see the little icon there, we get minus one. If we have access to cord, we get minus one again. Okay, as much as I'd like to have this weapon, I can only keep one of them. I'm going to keep the idea for how to make fire because it's time to cook this meat, baby. We're going to have a, we're going to have crab tonight. Now, since Jen and I did this together, either of us can choose this. I already have three ideas. 
That's my maximum hand size. Jen has one, so we'll give it to we'll give it to her. All right. So Jen now has two ideas: how to build a bow and arrow. And so you know, it would have been nice to have this weapon, but sooner or later we'll build the bow anyway. And so we now can make fire. Fire! Excellent. Okay. So, that was all a bunch of uh, exciting stuff. We took a risk, it paid off, and now we can travel back and forth. Now, traveling, everybody has a reminder here on their own player card. Anybody can travel by spending, by drawing cards and getting successes equal to whatever it says where we want to go. This is where we want to go. It says right down here, to move into this area, we need to draw one card, but we don't need any successes. So, um, or, you know, and, 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 uh, and so we can do it separately or we can do it together. Now, I think Jen and I will just do this travel together. So we're going to travel, which means we have to draw one card. We don't need, it doesn't matter what it is. We, get, we instantly succeed. And, ooh, twigs. Now, this is another way to make fire. Oh, come on. Where's all this fire been? Okay, so we, have, so we have to draw this. This can either go into the discard pile, which means we're getting further exhausted, or again, this is an idea that somebody can keep. Jen will go on ahead and keep this. So now her hand of ideas is full. She's got the cord, she's got the twigs, and she's got the bow. She's going to have to make some of these things to make room in her head for another idea. But we have now traveled. Now we can always travel back here if we want to draw... Oh, actually, no. Um, right, so we cannot travel here normally because there is no direct uh, cost for traveling. That's because this was a, it was special for getting to this region. And I'm again, I'm not going to say how we got there. It was a big surprise for us. But we'd have to find another way to get back here because we cannot travel. This, this dangerous thing was a, um, a one-way trip. You know, the, the, this razor-sharp rock. Okay. So, uh, that was that. Now, here we are. We are in a region that has flint rock, right? And remember, we need, let's see, to, for, to make twigs, we need wood. And that mean, if we had wood, we'd be able to build a fire for free. Now, I do know where there's wood to be found on this island, but it's a long ways away. So I'm not going to bother with that. But we can also make fire with this weaved cord. Normally, we'd have to draw two cards, exhausting our draw pile further, but we don't need any successes. But because we're in an area with stone, we only have to draw one. And now here's the other trick. We need, if we had stone and cord, we wouldn't have to draw anything. Now, this region does not have cord, but in my shoulder bag, which is a collection of all the knowledge we have accrued throughout the game, experience points we've earned, special tricks about how to cure poison, we have this little bit of knowledge, which is seaweed can be used as cord. So if we ever go to a place where we can see seaweed, it's as if the cord icon is there. If we had never discovered this little trick, then seaweed, seeing seaweed in a, in a given area would mean nothing to us. But look at this. There's seaweed here. So, because we have knowledge, because of our adventures, we, there is stone here, and there is cord here. That means we can build fire for free. Okay, so we've traveled here. Our next move is, Jen is going to make us a fire. Hooray! Okay, so, now, um, let's see here. The uh, weaved cord is, um, ba, 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 ba. okay, so Jen has to build this thing first, because right now it's just an idea. So Jen has to dis draw, discard, draw two cards for success, but minus one and minus one means Jen can make the weaved cord out of what she finds here, and boom, we're done. We have built this. Jen now has, she already has her splint, now she has weaved cord as well. And now here's an interesting thing, Jen can add this as, um, in a two-player game, our shoulder bag reminds us, we can, in a two-player game, we can have three item stacks. Jen has one item stack. This would be starting a second item stack. But in the interest of saving space, this cord has serenity as a keyword on it. There is serenity on her first stack. So Jen can just add this as an upgrade to her original stack. Because this basically means is Jen's got, in this stack, she's got the goods to build three different things. She can make splints. She can make pan pipes and cheer us up or you know, um, distract uh, enemies when they're hunting. Oh, this actually also helps when making a campfire. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. And so, Jen, this stack means 
Jen has figured out how to use some basic goods to, to do all these different things. And Jen still has two more spaces. Me, my first stack is my walking pole, which we could have used for the balance, but we didn't need it. And then my second stack is full of meat, which we are about to eat because we're hungry. You can tell we're hungry because our discard pile is now bigger than our draw pile. And that's a bad situation. So Jen just did an action. And because we were in the right place at the right time, we were able to combo it all together and do it without any further stuff. So that was awesome. Now, um, I think, let's see. So whenever, wherever you are in the world, you, oh, whoops, oh, by the way, I forgot. When we entered here, you'll notice there's random event, random event in those two places. So actually, a random event has to go here. A random event has to go there. OK. So um, if we want to go east or south, we have to deal with more random events. And we don't know what they are. They could be good things. They could be bad things. Who knows? So those are out there. Now, the game is very freeform, very flowing. Wherever you are, you can do whatever actions are available to you. This is an action. We could find out what this problem is. This is an action. We could find out what this problem is. This is an action. We could go explore this area. This is an action. We could go explore this area. Um, and this is an action right there. Jen could make fire. And then after Jen makes fire, this is an action to eat. That's our next two actions. Jen is going to make a fire. Now, again, let's just go ahead and show this again. Remember, to make a fire, Jen needs to draw two cards. Doesn't need any successes, but it just takes time. Jen's going to have to burn through two cards to make this fire. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. Because Jen had this other idea a while ago, this thing will help. So, um, you know, when she tries to do this fire, this will help. So she, she already gets either one success or minus one on the card draws. Jen will take the minus card draws. So now to make a fire, she only needs to draw one card. And the interesting thing is, if I tried to help her, we could fix it so she wouldn't have to draw any cards. Um, but then we would need, you know, um, you know, it goes down, but we'd have to get a success. Jen doesn't need my help. Jen is just going to go on ahead and make a fire. She's going to use this, which means she only has to draw one instead of two. And so let's see what she gets. She gets knowledge is power. Now this is an action that Jen can do later to basically, um, you know, draw a card to. For each knowledge is power, you can get more um, experience points, which you could use later to get really big ideas. Now, I don't think Jen needs this because, well, OK, she's got two ideas. So she does have room for it. So what the heck? She'll go on ahead and take it and put it in her hand. Now, it's kind of a shame. If I had helped Jen, um, actually, you know what? It would have been sorry. And it actually, as a rule, Jen, I found it's usually a good idea to always declare that we're helping each other. Let's, why would that be? Let's say I helped her. Now, I didn't have anything to help, but I helped anyway. That means if we do something together, whoever, you know, remember when you draw a card, you get to take it. Jen could take it, or since I helped her, I could take it. Now, I want this, not for its power, but because it's a stealth card. And my special power is, my, my character power is, I can get, discard multiple stealth cards to get out of mandatory actions. So, oh, that's really interesting. Remember, I had that mandatory action with the curse. I could have discarded stealth cards to not have to face that thing. So anyway, I want this card so I can have more stealth cards on hand. Now, I already have three cards, so I'd have to give up one. And I already have two stealth cards. And the only other non-stealth card I gave up is these gourmet, but this is going to help us eat, so I don't think I'm going to do that. So Jen is going to take this anyway, which is too bad because she doesn't particularly benefit from stealth. So Jen took that. She has now successfully made a fire. But, oh, whoops, I forgot one more thing. All right, remember, when Jen had the idea to build this, there was two. When Jen added this to the stack, remember, this stack had five. This stack has now gone up to six. I don't believe you can push it to seven. So, but anyway, Jen's got another charge out of her super stack of stuff. So anyway, Jen is going to use this stack of stuff to knock down to five to make a fire which she just did. She drew a card. Uh, instead of discarding it, she kept it. And she has now successfully made a fire. We have fire in this area now. So that was another action Jen did. Now I'm going to do an action. I am going to do the eat action on these meat crustaceans. Now if we look at this little guy, you can see, um, you know, eat. 
It, we don't have to draw anything. There's no success or failure. It's easy to eat. When you eat, draw three cards, six if you have fire, and we have fire, from your discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. And then return this. So basically, um, you know, we've eaten it. It's gone. So I am going to eat one, two times. We are going to eat all this crab, but because there's fire, this is going to give us 12 cards from our discard pile and put them back in here, and that's going to be a huge benefit. We are going to, we're going to eat well and get well rested. Now, the other thing is, I have the idea of gourmet, which helps me whenever I want to eat. You can see, this can help on the eating action, which is what we're doing. So it says, the following effect applies as long as, as long as I've got gourmet food on my mind, whenever we eat, randomly take one card from the discard pile and shuffle. So that means each of these meat are worth seven. We're going to get 14 cards back. That is huge because I'm a gourmet and as we're eating, I will describe how delicious the food is and that will make us get even more energized. So we're going to eat these things over the fire with my gourmet commentary and that means we get 14 of these cards back. So we would shuffle it a little bit. Um, that's good enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That was a delicious meal. And so now all these, this is a, represents a bunch of different new ideas that are available to us that get shuffled back into our main deck. We're, we're re-energized, we're not in danger of, of dying anytime soon, and we've got a whole bunch more. But the food is all gone. Now, I know where the hunting ground is. We could go out and hunt some more, and then bring it back up here and, and eat some more if we wanted to. But I think instead, well, there was another area of the island that when we were at, and it's over to the east that we never explored, and that's where we want to go next. We want to head east, which means we're going to have to deal with whatever this is, then we'll find what's there. Although I've already been there before, so I already know what's waiting for us, but I don't know what new event is going to prevent us from trying to get there. When we go over there, we will be able to travel north, which we've never done before. And so, there is a whole new section. Now, basically what we're doing is, if once we deal with this, you can see it's going to tell us we're going to go back to card number one which is actually where we started this entire adventure. And when Jen and I started, we went off this way, we explored, we did a bunch of stuff, but we never went to number seven. We never went north. So what I'm hoping is if we head north, maybe we'll find something that helps us with this um, submarine, which is like the big goal. We want to get in there and we don't want to take a chance of, of destroying the submarine. So I think now that we are very well rested, look at that. Oh my gosh, this is healthy. That's a draw pile, that's a discard pile. That's the way you want it to be. That was some good eating. And like I said, we know where there's hunting ground. Now, there's random, you know, you could go hunting and fail. Again, it depends on what card you draw and how many successes you need. If Jen gets her um, bow built, that's gonna really help us hunting, of course, as does her splint. It helps us hunting because it can kind of lure the animals or soothe them so they're easier to catch. So we have a pretty good chance of going hunting again if we need to get more food. But for now, we're very energized. We're very well rested. I think it's time to head over here and deal with this. And let's say Jen and I, we're going to do it together. So we flip to find out what it is. We are determined. Lost in the middle of nowhere, you realize how dear life is to you. Discard this to apply the following effect. So this was an idea. Well, so this was not a bad thing, it was a good thing. Either Jen or I, because we did this together, can take this idea and add it to our hand. This is definitely going to go for Jen because it's a will card. So Jen, she didn't really like this knowledge is power anyway. She's going to dump that and replace it with determined. So when Jen needs it, she can be determined. So we've explored that area. We've revealed number one. Now we can travel there. Now to travel to this area, we need to discard one card. And so we'll do it. We'll travel. We discard one card. And remember, whenever you're having to do actions, we don't have to discard it, we can take it. So either of us can take this idea for being a bookworm. Discard to apply the following effect. If you take a 400 card, which is something that might happen in a certain area, take one additional card, keep one, and discard the other immediately. So now that's interesting, but I think Jen, to make room for it, 
She would have to get rid of the ability to make more fire, a weapon, or her determined. For me to get rid of it, I'd have to get rid of my gourmet, which we saw how nice it was, my bag, or my secondary route. I think we're not going to keep the bookworm. That's just going to get discarded. And so we've arrived here. And now, when we got, when we, I forgot to do it. When I put it here, you can see there's a thing saying, hey, if you want to go to the north, you have to deal with whatever this is. Now, we've arrived. So we could deal with whatever's to the north. We could also go explore this, which means we have to draw one card and find out. It basically means we kind of climb up this little mountain range and we find out what's up at the top. And so those are our actions. We could explore that. We could uh, deal with this and head north. Now we could travel back. Um, we could travel back over here and go south. It's up to us. Jen, anytime she wants, she could try to build her bow, but she doesn't want to do that until she finds some wood. I, I, anytime I want, I could try to build my bag, but I can't. I don't want to do that till I find some leaves. I'm hoping maybe up north we could find some wood or some leaves. Who knows? But you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there before I spoil anything more. That was it, folks. That was a playthrough of a few little sample um, moments in the greater adventure of Seventh Continent. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts about this game, you can hit the button on screen or follow the show notes, you know, the little eye up there, in five, four, three, two, one.